नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय हरे कृष्णा एवरीवन सो टुडे वी मूव टू द समरी ऑफ चैप्टर 14 ऑफ भगवत गीता द थ्री मोड्स ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर Lord Krishna explains the supreme wisdom through Arjuna. The total material substance called Brahman is the source of birth that Lord Krishna impregnates, making possible the births of all living beings. The total material substance is the source of the three modes of the material nature: goodness, passion, and ignorance. These modes compete in exerting their influence upon the conditioned soul. By observing the modes at work we can understand that they are active not we and that we are separate in this way the influence of material nature gradually diminishes and we attain krishna's spiritual nature the mode of goodness eliminates it frees one from all sinful reactions but conditions one to a sense of happiness and knowledge one who dies in the mode of goodness attains the higher planets a person influenced by the mode of passion is plagued by unlimited desires for boundless material enjoyment to satisfy those desires he is always engaged he is always forced to engage in hard work that binds him to sinful reactions resulting in misery a person in the mode of passion is never satisfied with the position he has already acquired after death he again takes birth on earth among persons engaged in filthy activity the mode of ignorance means delusion it fosters madness indolence laziness and foolishness if one dies in the mode of ignorance he has to take birth in the animal kingdom or the hellish world a person who transcends the three modes is steady in his behavior aloof from the temporary material body and equally disposed towards friends and enemies such transcendental qualities can be achieved by full engagement in devotional service so this is chapter 14 any comments thank you karuna well explained Durma ji should say that this chapter um is a uh, important one to understand um so that we can work out where we we stand because Krishna explains as you very nicely explained that these three modes um goodness passion ignorance permeate to our throughout everything we do depending on which mode we are controls uh how we behave how we act how we think and if we can work out which mode we are in then we have a better chance of self development improving so that we can go to the uh stage higher stage higher than where we are and uh, this mode the modes are really well explained uh, as karuna has uh, already written down you know the passion generally everybody is in this mode of passion where uh, you know we have to get things done we are doing it i am the doer if i wasn't there it won't get done that sort of mode generally speaking uh, people in this world are in that uh, in that mode so we have to understand that's where we are at and what we want to at least reach guru maji so i say at least at least reach the mode of goodness because the mode of goodness is you know sinful the peaceful yeah illuminating happy <laughs> but even that mode um if we die in that mode then we'll go to the heavenly planets which is fine but it's not good enough because from the heavenly planets we can always come back here so from the mode of goodness yes we want to go beyond that mode even 
one, as uh, Colonel has just beautifully put here, the, pers uh, the person who transcends the three modes, aloof from this material body, friends and the enemies he doesn't distinguish necessarily, equally disposed. That person, he'll be engaged in, fully engaged in bhakti, and he's going to get out of this world. So we want to, this, we want to reach this uh, place of uh, pure goodness, unalloyed pure goodness. Then uh, um, we can only do that if we understand where we are at and try to progress ourselves step by step. Very important. So Krishna here, just in very brief summary, gives what the modes are, how they interact, where we are, and how to get over them. This is a phenomenal chapter. Gives all of that information in just you know, like 30, 35 verses. I can't remember how many, 28 verses. Any questions? Any, any comments? Prabhuji? Yes, Lani That I found it at times hard to understand the modes are there. I know. I know what they do in each particular mode that we want somebody's in. Mm. But that in the interaction with the karma that we, we are born with or that we develop, mm. that I find it hard to sort of distinguish between the two. Like what, like what I'm doing, like suppose I'm, we are in this class, which is in a mode of goodness, we are reading Gita. But is it just my mode or is it because of something that I've done in the past that has brought me here that, uh, that I'm interested in uh, studying Gita in the scriptures? For oh, sure. The past has a big impact because how, uh, you know, the th three things that influence our next birth, karma, huh. consciousness, and desire. Yes. So those three things have an impact on our, uh, our, on our lives in this, in, this, in this current situation we're in. So definitely the past karmas will have had an impact on why you're here. But the fact that you still have a choice. Right? This is that point about <laughs> freedom of choice. You can switch off. You can be in the class, but switched off completely, like I usually am, <laughs> completely switched off. Or you can be awake and alert, which you always are, because you always ask A sign that somebody's uh, fully alert in class is they ask questions. And you always ask questions. That's so encouraging. It's because I don't know much, that's it. <laughs> no. You know a lot. Uh, you're really humble as well, you know, amazing. So the thing is, yes, it's, it's, it's a bit of both. It's, it's definitely the karmas bringing you to this. But now it's your, um, your interest, your desires, your ambition of improving in, you know, in, in, in the quality of your devotion. So... It's a combination of both. Uh, karma plays a big role because if you didn't have the good karma, you wouldn't be in this place in the first place. So, yeah. And the good fortune of a devotee, uh, you know, whoever gave you, you know, the Bhagavad Gita, uh, whoever gave you the um, inspiration to take this path, that their their blessings are so powerful, so powerful. And always thank that person who, who introduced you, you know, to this, to this path. Very important person. <laughs> Hare Krishna Prabhuji, it's Nutan. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Good Hare to see you. I, I just wanted to add something. Um, mm. When I used to go to Vedanta classes uh, uh, here in Thornton Heath, there was a young man called Aditya Gurtu. And he used to do some Sanskrit and Vedanta with us. And he learned uh, uh, from um, uh, Dayanand uh, Saraswati, um, his, from his lineage, um, the Saraswati lineage. And he actually learned from Dayanand the um, uh, recording the, progress. <laughs> And um, he said, um, he used to always tell us when we sat there, because there would only be about seven or 10 of us in class. And he said, look at the look at our Hindu population, or just look at the population around us, but especially the Hindu population. And out of there, 
there's only 10 of you sitting in my class. But he said that his, his Swamiji used to always say that even if you can sit in one Vedanta class, I don't know if he was saying that to us, but I've heard it from our other teacher as well, that even if you, if you can uh, sit in one Vedanta class, um, you would have done so much punya in your past lives to be able to even just sit because how can we ask so many people, you know, say, oh, come to class with us, you know, come and come and listen just one hour, one, one and a half hours. And people say, no, 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 I've got too many things to do. I've got too much. So that was always my question to him. And he said, no, no, because I said, how is it because of your interest that you come? And he said, no, you have to have done so much good karma to be actually be able to be sitting in these classes. Otherwise you just don't. So I think what, what you just said, um, we used to feel, we thought we were massaging our egos, you know, <laughs> thinking we had done a lot of good. <laughs> and we thought he was just saying, we thought he was just saying that to us so that we keep coming to class again and again. But uh, no, that's what we've been told. So I just wanted to add that little bit. Sometimes Prabhupada was asked as well, how come in the religious meeting or in the spiritual meeting, there's not so many people. So he used to say to uh, devotees, look, when you go on the streets and you go into the shops, how many people are in the sweet shop, right? Lots and lots. How many people are in the jeweler shop? Very, very few. So, yes, I one thing I, uh, I want to say, you know, we have got the mercy of Prabhupada, mercy of devotees, mercy of Guru Maharaj. So many years he, he was among us. So mm. we, we get such association and we had gone to those uh, religious places, Vrindavan, all these things. These are mercies that makes us to attend those classes almost every day. Mm. Do you agree with me? It is <laughs> <necessary>. <laughs> and he so used why? classes which used to last till midnight, right? Yes, that's the hours idea. and hours. Yes. Because we are waiting for, for it, you know, we like to read, we like, I, I myself, I'm a retired man, what I do the whole day, the whole day, I chant the holy name, play with my little kid, and uh, read Srimad Bhagavatam, read Chaitanya Chari Amrit, which is very, very interesting, Prabhu. So it makes great sense, you know, when you read this uh, Chaitanya Chari Chaitanya, Charita Amrit, it is so nice. Mm. Uh, and I go to sleep by by uh, midnight. <laughs> mm. It's like this. It, it is, sorry, Prabhu, I'm just... Uh, no, uh, good. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, yeah. Anything else, uh, Nutanji, Nariven? No, Prabhuji, no, that's fine. Okay. That's fine, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for, it's so good to have this interaction, actually. It's amazing. Now, for Prabhu, you were saying something about Prabhupada and then you didn't finish. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's right. He, he used to say, how many people turn up in, in, you know, in the sweet shops? Oh, many. How many people in the jeweler shop? Not too many. So the reason they, everybody's in the sweet shop because, you know, this is cheap and it's fanciful and it's you know tasty and it's, it's immediately enjoyable but the jewelers you know if you want to get something from you you have to have some money you have to have a lot of <laughs> wealth if you want to buy something at the jewelers so you don't see many people there so in the same way when you are in a spiritual meeting you're not going to see many people because this is something that is um difficult to understand it's it's not going to immediately improve your quality of life although it can but it takes time to understand spiritual many people on the street used to say to me okay tell me about Krishna consciousness give me you got one minute and I used to say to you <laughs> forget it. You just I can't explain to you anything in one minute you know it's like if you want to become a doctor it takes you four five seven eight years if you want to understand God it's going to take you many lifetimes. Forget about one minute. So, you know, this is, um, so we're not going to expect many people. But even if, my rule is, there should be at least five people in the class. And that includes Jayanti, me, 
Radha Krishna and either Nani Ben, Kamakshi, <laughs> Karuna, <laughs> Sitara. That's enough. No more is needed. <laughs> because actually we're learning for ourselves. Uh, we have so much to learn ourselves. We're not, if this person isn't here, doesn't matter. If this person isn't there, it doesn't matter. I always worry about the person who's here rather than the person who's not here. <laughs> so I think uh, that's uh, very good. I, I always say as well that the ones who have taken time out to be there in present and uh, earn the nectar, they should be most welcome. The ones who haven't turned up is the hard luck. Yeah. Yeah, we, we obviously want to share it, uh, and but you can't, you know, you, you can bring the horse to the water, isn't it? And you can't make him drink it. Um, so many. Hare Krishna, brother. Yeah. Yes. Hare well, brother. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, uh, I want to add, you know, above all, above all, Lord Krishna is with us, Prabhu. When you do classes, wherever, he mm. also is witnessing what you are doing. Uh, it's like this, and which gave us. Uh, encouragement when you are reading, when you whatever you're doing, Lord, the Lord is with us. Mm. You agree, Prabhu? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is. when is he not with us? No yes. chance, he's always with us. Yeah, only of course, we've got to have the vision to see it. Person who is in the mode of pure goodness yeah. will see the Lord all the time. You know, he sometimes, won't do anything. Wrong. Sometimes, Prabhupada said that you should be transcendental. So you have not any <clears throat> relation with this with this mortal world. You are you belong to the spiritual world. So why should I <clears throat> see all these things? So, yes, I cannot forget my family. No, it's like this. But somebody who is a devotee, you can spend hours with him. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. when you mm-hmm. see with him, those friends, oh, and she a bit uh, Hare Krishna, it's finished. <laughs> Finish. See, this is a really good point. When we, when we associate with um, materially minded people, this is where the modes really have a big impact. We take the mode of that person who we're associating with. Someone likes gossiping, we join in. Mode of goodness, mode, mode of passion, ignorance. Ah, yes. But if we take association of uh, devotees, then that the mode of pure goodness will come naturally, you know, it's because it's, if we're enjoying the company of a devotee, then my goodness, you know, our path is, uh, you know, going very good, quick. Yeah, it's going to be a quick path back to Godhead. And the best way. Prabhupada's given us the association through his books, you know, so we are very, very fortunate. Very, very fortunate. Nobody's got an excuse, basically. <laughs> we can uh, associate with Popa any time of the day or night. No problem. Okay. Mm. Yeah, um, just one thing I remember is uh, when uh, devotees, you should say that, when you're going out uh, doing book distribution, uh, not everyone will accept that book. But mm. uh, you know, a, a person who's met a devotee a few times, like I think six or seven times, then they'll have a good impression. You know, if you leave a good impression, then they will mm. uh, be ready to accept a book. So, when someone accepts a, a book from you or or comes to classes, it means that they had. Um, Blessing. ble- blessings of devotees in the past to be at that stage and also because the devotees have left a good impression on them for them to come and join as well because if, if you leave a bad impression then you know you will put them off for life we tested that theory actually that you, you have to meet a devotee six or seven times <laughs> in order to buy a book so six of us or seven of us were standing in the line and we would check this would the person stop? And then nobody ever stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, it does make sense that, you know, if you if someone's left a bad impression, not even in this life, maybe in a previous life, then, you know, those are impressions which are um, mm. embedded in, in your psyche, you know, will stop you as well. 
Yeah. So say say somebody doesn't come to a class. We should never be rude to that person. You know, they they have their reasons. Mm. Fair enough. You know, at the end of the day, we simply have given the opportunity. You know, and uh, what to do? What to do? You know, we can only give the opportunity, and the rest is between that person and the Lord and the super soul. You know, so. Okay, Karuna, I think we've uh, taken over your uh, session again. <laughs> oh, Prabhu, I'm learning a lot. You're giving a lot, so it's good. Thank you. So maybe we can stop there and continue tomorrow. Very good, actually, these sessions, because we are getting to discuss, and uh, it's important. This chapter 14, we've got a whole quiz. In fact... Pari, I'll ask Pari to come on one day and she can do the quiz with the elders, with the older. We did it with the children and it was really good. Um, which mode we're in, we can work it out. Uh, and she done a phenomenal job. So I'll ask her to, when, uh, when we're all around, uh, to, to come and join us and we can go through that quiz for chapter 14. Okay. Bhagavad Gita ki jai. 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 Karuna ki jai.